Okay, um, I think that uh, we're about ready to start. And welcome everyone, thanks for coming. This is a serious talk about a serious problem. I'd like to update my statistics on how many people have migraines. And I was pretty much astounded to see that 1 billion people in the world have migraines. It is a difficult problem. And my job here is to help you how to get fewer migraines and less severe migraines. One of the things about our modern medical system is they're great at treating things, but they're not so good at preventing things. And prevention is a lot of what I'm going to talk about today. And the main way to prevent migraines is to learn your own triggers. When you know your triggers, you can avoid your triggers. Well, in most cases, if atmospheric disturbances are your trigger for migraines, it's harder to uh, avoid. I'm going to also mention some medical plants that have been shown in clinical trials to reduce migraine pain, some of them quite markedly. And I'll mention some quick remedies for migraines. If you're in pain, it's really nice to get something that helps right away. I will also talk tonight about inflammation and migraine pain. Inflammation is something we can do a lot about. I am a nutritional biochemist, so my focus is on reducing inflammation by eating less inflammatory foods. So we're gonna talk about what you can do to get fewer migraines and have them be less painful. I only discuss safe treatments, never anything that uh, could cause side effects that are adverse. And I get my information from reliable medical journals and no other sources. Wouldn't it be nice if you could reduce the number of migraines that you get from three per week to maybe one or two every other month? These on this screen, skip meals are one of the biggest triggers for migraine. When you skip a meal, it can trigger adrenal hormones, such as cortisol, that trigger a stress reaction that can trigger the migraine and the pain and the other problems with it. So skip meals is something you can avoid. And uh, also fumes, odors, paint fumes, and perfume. 76% of migraineurs, now I may refer to the term migraineur today, that means someone who gets migraines. 76% react to perfume and 46% to paint fumes. If you are overweight, it's been shown that you can reduce the frequency and severity of migraines by losing weight. I know it's tough to lose weight, but five times the risk of migraines with more weight is a, a really significant amount. Now, you may have heard of histamine, perhaps only as an antihistamine, which are used for uh, asthma and other inflammatory conditions. Histamine-free diets reduced 68% uh, of the participants had a 50% reduction in their migraines. That's a huge reduction, and I'm going to tell you which foods you can uh, avoid. Also, one drink and cigarettes. One of the plants that is uh, extremely cheap but common, safe, is ginger powder. And they put ginger powder head to head with sumatriptan, one of the drugs that's often used for migraine pain, and it worked just as well. Five cents of ginger with safe beneficial side effects instead of the potentially adverse side effects of the drug. And so that's, that's something I'll discuss uh, the clinical trial where they put those two head to head as we go on today. One vitamin, vitamin B2, known as riboflavin, 59% of patients had a 50% reduction. This is a huge amount of reduction for a vitamin that has no adverse effects and is safe. Quenzyme Q10, have you heard of that one? It's something we make in our own bodies. It's a fat-soluble antioxidant. Also is involved in energy production. And again, 61% of migraineurs had a 50% reduction in migraine days when they use CoQ10. Now there's a plant called butterbur. It is possibly contaminated with 
substance that can be removed. So you need to get the butter burr that is without this substance. And I'll tell you what that is and how to do that. But again, three quarters of migraineurs had a 50% reduction in frequency. And this could really help. This talk today is about real migraines. There are many other types of headaches or tension headaches and sinus headaches and others. Some of the techniques will help with the other types of headaches, but my focus today is on real migraines. First thing you can do is learn your trigger foods and odors and other things that trigger the migraines and avoid them. That's huge. Good sleep and no skipped meals work for a lot of people, so you should consider that. Ginger tea with a few skullcap leaves can be used before bed. The skullcap leaves I'll mention can be relaxing and reduce the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate in the brain. Of course, there are many drugs that do this too, but skullcap tea is, well, the only side effect is it makes you sleepy, so it should be taken in the evening. So we need to reduce excitation of your brain. Overstimulation of any kind might trigger a migraine. So watch out for that. I'm going to be talking about fever for, excuse me, fever, few, and butter burr. And the butter burr needs to be without pyrolizidines. I'll mention again, magnesium uh, is amazing in how powerful it is in warding off migraines. It's uh, especially the migraines that are menstrual, but also all other types of migraines too. So if you wanna identify your triggers, I'll talk to you about a elimination diet where you kind of go to a very simple diet. And if your migraines back off, then you can add back one food at a time and see which food might be triggering that migraine. I'm not gonna talk about aerobic exercise today. I know that during a migraine, you don't wanna move. You don't wanna move at all, much less exercise. But in between migraines, the regular aerobic exercise can be helpful. A true migraine affects either half or all of the head and recurs periodically. They can last from four hours up to three days and that's really unpleasant. Nausea and even vomiting can accompany migraines and sensitivity to light, sound, or smell. Uh, a lot of times people with migraines wanna go in a dark room and hide under a blanket until the pain and nausea goes away. Uh, certainly physical activity can make the pain worse. So it's a good idea to, to not do that. Unfortunately, migraines occur in people of working age, typically, children and young adults. And so you lose a lot of days at work or school with migraines. And I'm hoping to help today with that. The migraine aura is something that not all migraineurs experience, but perhaps about a third of people do. And it can signal that the headache will perhaps soon occur. And it can be visual like this rather disturbing uh, image here on the screen. Uh, sensory, like uh, you, you think you smell something, uh, slurred language or uneven movements. Learn your own signs of an aura coming on so that you can take precautions to ward off a migraine. 40 million Americans are affected. That's more than one out of 10. And 1 billion, as I mentioned, worldwide, a huge number of people suffering. M migraine affects disproportionately 18% of women and 6% of men. Migraines, I'm going to talk a little bit today about the pathophysiology of migraines, how they occur, how blood vessels and nerves in the brain interact to make migraines. But it's, um, I, I won't overburden you with that. My goal today is to give you solutions. The increased excitability in the cerebral cortex plays a large role. And I'll talk to you about how to reduce that as we go on. Pain sensors, you can see in this man's head, the trigeminal nerves are outlined in yellow. And pain sensors in these trigeminal nerves can allow you to sense pain of a migraine. Now, genes can increase the risk through a vulnerability to environmental triggers, but if the environmental triggers are not there, then the migraine's not there either. This 
map of the world shows that, for example, in China, there are very few migraines. Uh, as well as I could, I confirmed there are very few migraines in China, whereas in Italy it seems to be about the most migraines anywhere. And large parts of Africa have very few migraines. This may also be due to poor reporting. Civilized countries tend to have more. Why, when we have different countries with similar genetic backgrounds, we have such variations in migraines? Well, I'll try and explain some of that today. You will notice at the bottom of my slides, I have citations to the medical references. In this case, Lancet Neurology 2018 is where I got the information on this slide. I think it's very important in this day of misinformation to know where my information came from and you can check it yourself. So to reduce migraine frequency and severity, that's our goal. Sleep well, learn from this kitten and puppy picture. Stress management's really important, aerobic exercise. Pain medications are necessary for the management of migraines. The, the way we can tell that natural solutions are helping is when people use less pain medication. And that's one goal is for you to need less pain medications so you have less side effects of those pain medications. Dietary modification and triggers are very, very important and supplements too. And I'll talk about all those today. There are many migraine drugs used, uh, of course, over the counter, ibuprofen and acetaminophen are very commonly used. Caffeine can be used. Caffeine's unique because it can either increase migraines or reduce them depending on the stage of the migraine and uh, whether a person is able to metabolize caffeine quickly or slowly. Botox injections are often used. They are extremely expensive and delicate and are temporary in their helpfulness. Triptans like sumatriptan with naproxen, probably the standard medication, reduce vascular inflammation and constrict arteries. And it's, it's when those blood vessels are inflamed that they put out the neuropeptides that create the pain. <laughs>